So let's face it, reading content on the internet is terrible. Like almost a universal bad experience. Even if you use an ad blocker, the number of pop-ups that you see on a daily basis probably numbers in the hundreds. And that's just not acceptable if you want to read any amount of content. A little bit is fine. But if you have to spend all day on there or you're just browsing the web for any amount of time during your leisure time, it can be downright painful. So you have to find an alternative, or at least I had to find an alternative. Now, the alternative that I found is one that has been around for many years. In fact, it's almost as old as the Internet itself, and that's RSS. Now, I've made videos about RSS in the past. And I, I've talked about some tools when it comes to RSS and why everyone should use RSS. And I'll probably talk a little bit about that stuff today. But really what I want to do is talk about the biggest tool that I use in order to make RSS work for me, which in turn makes the internet not so terrible. So today we're going to be talking about Fresh RSS. And this is a self-hosted application. Now I know that scares some people away, but we'll talk more about it here in a minute. And basically what it does is it manages all of your RSS feeds. That's what it does. It's a similar service to what you'd get with like Google Feeds back in the day or Feedly or something like that where it will manage a collection of feeds and then distribute it to wherever you want it to be. So we're going to talk about fresh RSS today but before we jump in if you'd leave a thumbs up on this video I'd be really appreciative. It'd really help the channel. So let's actually take a look at fresh RSS just right out of the box. This is what it looks like. So uh, there's not a lot of frills here. It's just a list of things that come from specific feeds managed by RSS. And you can get those feeds on basically any website that's out there. And then let's say you wanted to click on something here. You know, it would just show you the contents of that article or whatever it happens to be. In this case, it's a Reddit post. Now, the way that I use this is actually fairly simple. I have a whole bunch of categories. Uh, things about books, Linux, tech, I have one for fan fiction, I have a couple other ones that don't have unread messages in it right now, and it just basically ca pulls in the feeds from the places where I've set them up, and I can then browse them to my heart's content. Sometimes I end up having thousands of unread articles here, and I can just browse through them as I have time. It doesn't, they don't go away, right? So it, it also kind of acts as a save later type of thing, where I can not worry about missing things from the favorite sources that I have on the internet, place you know, subreddits or book blogs or tech blogs or whatever. I can kind of have all the stuff just saved here, and I don't have to worry about having to always constantly visit those websites. I've also set it up so that if I want to save something for later, I can favorite that thing and it will go into my favorites. So Fresh RSS allows you to do that very easily just by clicking on the star, and it will then save it for you in your favorites. I probably, as you can see, I've saved about 140 things in there over the time I've been using this for the last probably six months or so. And it just allows me to kind of save stuff without having to open the tab and store it as a tab. Now, this way of doing things really makes the internet work better for me simply because I don't have to visit any websites. All this stuff is just set up for me after I give them a URL for the RSS feed and I can come here. Now, it doesn't mean I never have to visit the site. So let's talk about the biggest downside of RSS. Just let's get that out of the way. Some sites, and unfortunately, uh, this day and age, it's a good portion of the sites on the internet really do limit the amount of content they send through RSS. So, for example, this article from The Verge looks like it's probably about half full. There's actually quite a bit more of the article after this if you were to go to the website. And The Verge is actually fairly generous. Some of them, like 9to5Linux, which is a blog that covers free and open source software, they limit theirs to just a couple paragraphs. That's all they do. If you want to see the rest of this, you have to click on here and actually go load their website, which is slower, and then scroll down to the rest of it. As you can see, there's quite a bit more there. So even websites that are free and open source covering websites oftentimes limit the amount of content they send through RSS. And obviously more corporate blogs and corporate websites do that as well because they want you to go to the website, get that impression, get their ad stuff. And I don't blame them. Like they are doing this for money and they don't get any money through RSS. There's not been a good way to monetize RSS yet that I know of. 
And that just means that in order to make this something that, you know, they can make money from, they have to entice you to go from here to their website. So that's the biggest downside of RSS. And it's the biggest downside of fresh RSS because basically this is just an RSS feed aggregator. So you're kind of going to have to suffer through the big biggest downfall of the technology that we're using. So overall, though, I do think that this still makes the internet better for me. And Fresh RSS itself does a really good job of managing RSS feeds. So as you can see here along the side, you just have a list of all your categories. And then if you expand that, you have a list of all the feeds themselves. You can also, uh, as I said, favorite items if you want to save them for later. You can mark certain feeds as important. That will send you a notification every time there's a new thing that comes into those feeds. And then you just have a gigantic list of your feeds here if you want them all kind of combined into one, which is not something that I use all that often. I much prefer go them, going to them by category. It much, makes it much easier. So I just have all the Linux stuff here. When I'm in the mood to go through Linux stuff, I'll do that, right? So that's the sidebar here along in the, in the main section. You have your list of feeds from that particular category or that particular feed. And if you want to read that, you just click on it. So that's the basic UI. The settings are vast. And I'm not going to go through all of these because it would just take forever. But basically, you can customize this however you want. And there are a ton of options for both customizing it and using it outside of your web browser. So there are many different mobile applications that you can use with fresh RSS on both iOS and Android. So you can actually get access to your feeds no matter where you're at. Also, if you use a third party RSS reader on Linux, a lot of them do support fresh RSS. So you don't have to use this in the browser if you don't want to. If you don't like the UI or whatever, you can use whatever app you want. The, I'd say probably the vast majority of applications do support fresh RSS. If they support the Google Reader API, which is what the fresh RSS uses, it will also support fresh RSS. Hopefully that API doesn't go away, given that it's, you know, a, a G Reader thing. But, you know, we'll worry about that later. The other thing you have to know is that there are extensions that you can use for fresh RSS. If you're going to use the web UI, you can add a whole bunch of extensions to make this more usable for you. So things like being able to share something by email, being able to sticky your feeds, being able to customize how the UI works or looks with custom CSS, all that stuff can be done through extensions. Now, if I remember right, actually installing the extensions requires you to basically download something and put it in a certain directory and then ours, fresh RSS will see that. So it's not like you can just click on something, have it install and it will work. So it's not as cohesive as you want it to be, but overall, not that big of a deal. There's actually, if I remember right, a gigantic pack of extensions that you can download from a GitHub page. I'll try to find that if, if I'm actually remembering right and post it somewhere. Basically, that just downloads. I think that's how I ended up with all of these uh, extensions as well. So I think that that's something that exists. Now, let's talk briefly about installation. This is a Docker container. So if you're not into Docker, chances are you probably won't be using this. You can install it with Docker or Unihost or Cloudron or things like that. I also believe that there's a way to do it via the just the regular command line, like running on an operating system. But I, I don't know how well that does. So the best way to do this is Docker. That's how I've done it. The Docker Compose file looks like this. It does require a database. So if you have a Postgres database, you could use that for if you already have one, you could use, you know, the, that database or you can create a new one it's not that hard i know this stuff looks complicated i will be doing a tutorial on how to use docker here in a few days but overall it's very simple and there's a lot of tutorials already on youtube so if you can't figure this out just go check out one of those overall though fresh rss is just fantastic and it's one of my favorite applications these days it's, it's a application i have ta always pinned to a tab so I have that here always, and I also have it available in, in an application on my iPhone. The iPhone application that I use is called Fiery Feed, F-I-E-R-Y Feeds, and it's a good application. There's also one called Classic Reader, R-E-E-D-E-R. -E -E uh, that is also pretty good, but I don't know that it's going to be continued to be uh, developed or what, whatever. But 
I use the web application on my computer, that on the mobile phone, and overall it's just a fantastic experience. I, I come to this application probably 10 or 15 times a day. Every time I have a little bit of downtime and I want to read some news, or I want to check on Reddit, or I want to check on you know my tech blogs or whatever, I come here, I see what's interesting. If I don't have time for whatever it happens to be, I'll favorite it, and I'll be able to come back to it later. That'll probably end up being a gigantic like list of stuff over the course of many years that just gets favorited and lost in a, in a list somewhere, but I'll deal with that later. Overall though, this is a very good application and if you use RSS or you want to get into RSS, I highly recommend checking this out because it's just very, very, very good. So I will leave links to all the instructions on how to install this and stuff in the video description so you can check it out. It's just a very, very good application. So that is Fresh RSS. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Links for Kofi and YouTube and Libera Pay and stuff will be in the video description as well. So if you want to support me on other platforms, you can do so. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very very much for your support i truly just seriously guys i honestly do appreciate it so thank you so very very much i truly do appreciate it like i said i said it a couple times it bared repeating thank you so much for your support i'll see everybody later thanks for watching i'll see you next time i remember how to do videos i remember i do remember sometimes at least until the end i always forget the ending i don't know why it's weird